Saturday, March 31st, 2018, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So I want to talk about a, a headline that's come out on Silver Doctors. I've had a few um, viewers uh, and subscribers ask me about it already, and uh, it's probably FUD, as they call it, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And it's a uh, Jim Rogers exclusive, sub thousand dollar gold coming. And uh, that's the headline from Silver Doctors. And then they put the uh, article uh, and you read the article and you listen to the interview. Uh, and it says legendary investor chairman of Rogers Holdings, Jim Rogers tells Silver Doctors gold, gold could fall below a thousand. Uh, and I think he's talking about, uh, basically, he's looking back to 2008 uh, when uh, Bear Stearns collapsed and had to be bailed out by the New York Fed. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll look into that and what, how gold reacted and why it did that. And um, I'll give you my opinion about what Jim Rogers said and why I'm not concerned um, about what he said. And why I actually don't think it will fall below a thousand this time. And I'll give you the reasons why. So um, the um, interview says here, uh, Jim Rogers interviewed by Silver Doctors. The Petro U1 was rolled out Monday with the release of U1 denominated oil futures contract. Rogers says U1 is the second largest holding in currencies. Rogers sees, final, sees financial turmoil ahead. He makes the case that during financial turmoil, people at, at first sell everything, including gold. Well, what kind of gold, though, is he talking about? I, I would uh, speculate to say that it's paper gold, and I'll explain to you why uh, I think it's paper gold. Uh, so lo let's go back 10 years, actually almost exactly 10 years, and look at uh, the Bear Stearns collapse. Bear Stearns, it's collapse and bailout. So um, it wasn't bailed out by the U.S. government, uh, and uh, they did let it collapse, but it was uh, bailed out by, uh, by J.P. Morgan with the help of the New York Fed. Uh, and uh, why did the, the New York Fed did help? Um, the New York uh, Fed kept uh, <laughs> toxic assets from um, Bear Stearns for J.P. Morgan for uh, four years. It was called the Maiden Lane um, Portfolio, as you can see here. Uh, for, this is from the New York Fed, actually. So uh, it, it was the Fed that bailed out uh, Bear Stearns. Uh, J.P. Morgan couldn't have done, done it without Bear Stearns. So I'll read a little bit here um, about what happened uh, to uh, Bear Stearns. Bailout. On Monday, March 10th, Schwartz thought he had resolved the hedge fund problem. Uh, uh, Schwartz is the CEO of Bear Stearns. He had worked with Bear's bankers to write down loans. Bear had 18 billion cash reserves. On March 11, 2008, the Federal Reserve announced its term security lending facility. It gave banks like Bear a credit guarantee, but investors thought it was a veiled attempt to bail out Bear. Same day, Moody's downgraded Bear uh, mortgage-backed securities to B and C levels. The two events triggered an old-fashioned bank run on Bear Stearns. Its clients pull pulled out their deposits and investments. At 7:45 p.m. on March 13th, Bear Stearns only had 3.5 billion uh, left in cash. How did that happen so quickly? Like many Wall Street banks, Bear relied on short-term loans called repurchase agreements. And again, uh, with LIBOR uh, going up a lot and LIBOR IOS spreads spiking uh, these days, uh, that's the cost of short-term loans. Uh, so there you go. It traded its securities to other banks for cash. The so-called repo agreement lasted anywhere from overnight to a few weeks. So basically by by March 18th, you know, I think it was all said and done, and J.P. Morgan, 
uh, had to take over the bank. It says the Fed lent up to $30 billion to J.P. Morgan Chase to purchase Bear. Chase could, or J.P. Morgan, they, they're saying Chase on this article, but J.P. Morgan Chase could default on the loan if Bear did not have enough assets to pay it off. Without the Fed's intervention, the failure of Bear, Bear Stearns could have spread to other leveraged investment banks. Well, that's all the uh, Wall Street investment banks, uh, the European investment banks. So that was the key there. People were concerned about counterparty risk already. And this was in March of 2008. Don't forget that Lehman collapsed in September, later on in the year. So let's have a look at what gold uh, did. Because um, I remember very well from personal experience that uh, at the time I already had physical gold, but I'd been trading uh, futures in gold. And uh, I was only leveraged, uh, my, I only leveraged my account like three or four to one. And I did very well because I'd been holding, like uh, I wasn't trading really, I was just holding the futures as a leverage. And I remember that on the day that uh, the dust settled, which was March 17th, uh, and all the Bear Stearns, uh, story was dominating everything people were scared gold actually made an all-time high at 1031.62 and that was the date that i closed uh, my gold futures position and why did i do that not because i uh didn't want to have gold but because i was concerned about counterparty risk with the broker because if bear turns almost collapsed and the other uh, banks were in danger, uh, other brokers, it could spread. And I thought, I don't want to have uh, a position in the futures. Did I sell my physical gold? Did I sell my physical silver? Of course not. I wasn't going to rush out and sell my gold and put it in the bank. That That's stupid. So what I think happened, as you can see, uh, f since 2001, when gold hit a low of 254, gold had gone up, you know, if you bought one future then, or you would have made $77,000, you can see. So gold had made a huge move uh, already then, uh, hundreds of percent. Uh, it, it was like a, a four bagger, right? 400%. So Bear Stearns collapse, and then what I think happened is people like Jim Rogers saying people will sell their gold, but I don't think they were selling their gold. They're closing out um, paper gold positions because they were scared of counterparty risk. And that's what happened. Uh, and uh, gold bottomed, uh, let's see here, 20th of uh, October 2018 at uh, just below 690. I think the low was 682.75. And uh, that was just uh, around the time as well, a few weeks after the uh, Troubled Asset Relief Program uh, was signed into law by President Bush, uh, I think it was $700 billion, to bail out basically the banks. So people, uh, and that, uh, and then that, that was the bottom in gold. And then gold, of course, uh, went up. Uh, kept going up. It didn't take long to make a new high. I think it, it was in 2009 already we made a new high above 1,031. So that's what I think happened. Uh, Jim Rogers might be right. Uh, people uh, with uh, counterparty risk in paper gold, yeah, they got out. But I, I, I don't think, I remember at the time the premium, the premium for Physical gold, I was checking all the time with the dealers in London. Uh, you, it was like 10, 15% to buy you know, a Sovereign or a Krugerrand. You could almost not uh, find any physical gold, even though the price was going down. Even silver as well, you had to pay double the price, in London at least, for physical gold. So what I'm trying to say uh, is that I wouldn't be concerned about this. Uh, Personally, I don't think even the paper price this time, if there is financial calamity, will do that. Um, and uh, this is why, because if you look uh, on this chart now, from 2008, uh, when gold uh, bottomed at uh, 682, 
we're only now, uh, we're not that far above high in 2008 at 1,031. So it's not like we've made a 400% gain since 2008, uh, like we had in 2008 from 2001. And the technical picture looks completely different here. We're breaking out of this uh, falling wedge. The uh, moving averages are moving the right way. We've got the 50 uh, week moving average now above the 100 week, which is the orange uh, line. The 50 week is the black and the green is uh, below all both of them, which is, as you can see, from 2005 to 2012. Uh, that's how it should be uh, during a bull market. So I actually think personally, I don't think that will happen. Uh, Emma, I, I could be wrong, of course, but uh, markets are like uh, measuring probability. My, uh, my bet would be to stay long uh, gold. Uh, physical gold, <laughs> I'm always long and I always keep it. But if you're going to be trading the paper... Uh, I think price will go up, the pay, even the paper price. But I actually wouldn't want to be um, have the counterparty risk because there, if there's financial calamity, there will the paper market will probably not even function, and the price that you see for gold will be like a, a physical gold price, or it could be a, a, an Asian price from Shanghai. We London and uh, New York could completely. Uh, meltdown in my opinion i think uh, yeah it's just fud from jim rogers I, I can see i think he's looking back at 2008 and what happened there um, and i think if there is a financial uh, calamity even let's say if the dow is to drop down to uh 10,000 uh, if gold is at a thousand, actually gold has done a lot better. So that's the other way you have to look at it in relative terms. And the other thing that uh, I wanted to show you is that back in 2008, um, we didn't have uh, central banks from the BRIC countries, like especially China and Russia. They weren't accumulating as much gold as uh, they have been since then. Uh, look at this uh, Russia gold reserves, millions of ounces. Look, look at how they started accumulating actually around that time, 2007, 2008. So if gold were to like puke the paper gold price, you can bet that uh, the Russians would be uh, gobbling up all the physical gold and it would be very hard for the small investors like us, the retail, to get any physical gold. Uh, so... I'm not worried about the Jim Rogers article at all. And even if it happens, gold will outperform all other assets, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I'd hold on. I mean, I, the question you need to ask yourself, if the world was coming apart financially and uh, financial firms and brokerage houses were uh, falling <laughs> or collapsing right, left and center, would you want to? Really sell this uh, with a dealer, get the cash and send it to your bank or your broker? No. Um, but if you had a, a position in uh, ETF or uh, gold uh, mining, mining stock um, fund uh, or any kind of derivative, uh, you'd want to get, get out of it and, and cash it out and buy physical gold. That's what you'd want to do. Uh, so that's what I think about the Jim Rogers story. Uh, and don't forget, he said gold could uh, drop below a thousand if there, there was a financial calamity. So um, I hope that helps. If there's financial calamity, why would you want to get rid of your financial insurance, which is physical gold and physical silver? So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share it. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can also follow me on steamit.com and on Twitter. And I'll talk to you later.